Howdy folks, a uh, video here today about being critical of information on the internet. Uh, anything that we take in, we should be asking questions of, right? Because again, our goals this week are to find those reliable sources and to do that, we kind of have to cut through maybe some of the crap. And then when we do find a source that we think is good, uh, what are the pros and what are the cons of that source? And to help us in that goal, uh, Last video, we took a look at these four criteria, authority, purpose, currency, and accuracy. Um, in addition to those four criteria, I'm gonna give you folks three critical questions. These are questions that we can be asking to help us on our way to evaluate these four criteria. So four criteria, three questions, let's get going. Number one, uh, who's behind the information? Is this a Media, social media post by a friend? Is this information from a credible news organization or a political group um, or an advertiser? Or is this from an academic research study? We should know that. And the big reason why is because of this thing called bias. And guess what? Everybody has bias. That's kind of like the spice of life. That's what makes me different from you. Um, however, bias can really, really cloud our judgment when it comes to information because bias is my uh, favor for or against an idea inherently. It's just, just part of my experience of, of growing up or my living or my rural view. Um, and so while I can't get rid of my bias entirely, that would be impossible. I should be aware of it in myself and in other folks, because I know that a, an organization or a person, they have their own perspective that they're trying to like convince me of. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I better be aware of it when someone's trying to persuade or manipulate me. So to help you with that, um, here's sort of a spectrum of online news sources that you might encounter as you're doing research for this research project or that you should be taking a look at as you're encountering information on the web. So from the very best, we're going to take a look at just informational reports, pure data. This is like governmental data and research reports and scientific papers and stuff out of colleges, things that very, very few people read. Like, I don't even read that many research reports, reports every year. Maybe one or two if it's an educational in issue that I'm really, really interested in. Otherwise, no way. These are like way too much information um, for us to really process. If anyone says that they read a lot, a lot of research reports, they're probably lying to you. Um, <laughs> So sort of a step down from that pure information, because very few of us can actually process that, because um, this is written for scientists, it's not written for us, <laughs> uh, are going to be those professional or trade journals. And these are magazines and publications that employ either journalists or scientists to write about happenings in the world in a way that a large portion of the population can understand it. I can't understand census data, but someone from The Economist can write an article about it that I can understand, or the Smithsonian or Science Magazine. Um, so a step down from that is gonna be sort of our standard news um, sources. Uh, so Fox News, CNN, NPR, NY Times, Time Magazine, Wall Street Journal, any sort of big name uh, media outlet. They're all gonna have their pros and cons. Again, every organization has bias, but in strict news reporting, these, you know, the big ones generally do an okay job. Not to say they're perfect. Um, trust me, I'm a journalism teacher and I know the, the ins and outs and the, the issues of journalism. Um, but this reporting is better than, you know, someone named Garbage Eater 1791 on YouTube, right? At least I know where this is coming from and I know that the bias that it's trying to spin for me, like I know Fox News is gonna lean conservative and I know CNN is gonna lean a little bit more liberal. Um, and I can use that information to kind of filter and process that information. So that's generally the sites meant to inform. If we look into the sites that are intended to persuade us, we could look into the opinion pieces, right? Fox News, CNN, NPR, New Times, they have credible people write opinion articles for their news organizations. And that's great. I, I definitely wanna be looking at what are scientists' opinions and what are economists' opinions about current issues today. Now, they're still opinions, right? They're still taking facts and they're interpreting it for me, which I'm always gonna be wary of. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. But uh, as long as I understand what this person's perspective is and that they're trying to persuade me, I'm not gonna immediately like hook, line and sinker, take what they're saying and make it my new you know, mantra. 
And then kind of that last site barely above the line that we should use, but we should be cautious when we're investigating information from these sites. I'm going to call them interest sites. So this is any group or organization that has an online presence um, that's trying to promote something, right? Um, and that could be against gun laws, right? Like the NRA does. Do you think the NRA is ever going to publish or highlight uh, an article that says like, hey, gun control laws work? No, they're not. That's not what that organization is for. Um, same thing with the NEA, the National Educators Association, an association that I'm a part of, right? Do you think the NEA is ever going to say something super critical about teachers? Probably not. That's not who they are. They are defending their interests. Now, their information may not be wrong. It may not be factually incorrect, but it's definitely going to be very biased, um, trying to get me to think a certain way. So again, as long as I know that, I can use that information as a way to explain that perspective and about that's it. Anything else on the internet, I'm going to say be really, really careful of. Blog posts, forums, social medias, there's no real fact checking that's going on there. And it's really hard for us to walk through our next couple of questions. Like, what's their claim? What's their evidence? And does it check out? All right. Do people list their sources on the internet? They're rarely on social media, right? And if they do, you better go check that out and qualify, well, what kind of source is this? You know, is this another kind of fringe news site? Is this another persuasive article? What are we looking at? Um, and if they, if a web page is listing sources and linking things, go check those out. See if those are legit. Are they linking to a news article that was published in 1950? Probably not that credible. But if they're linking to sources outside of their own website, they're also kind of validating that information. You can start to think, okay, maybe there is something here. Which leads us to our last question. What do other sources say about this information? Um, so we need to check out other sources. Get on our search engine. Um, search for those, some of those. You know, you get back here. Look at some of these other sources that we can find, right? Just because Fox News says it doesn't mean it's, you know, solid gold. Same thing with CNN. Same thing with NPR. Um, if all of the news organizations are kind of reporting on it, then we can think like, okay, this is gaining traction. So it's so important that you diversify the type of information that you're watching um, and you're getting your information from, right? Don't just rely on Jake from Twitter. <laughs> all right. So this is called uh, getting away from a site is called lateral reading. So reading vertically, if you think on your phone, if I'm just going to scroll up and down vertically, I'm just going to stay on that one site. And that's the only source of information that I'm going to get. So instead, I need to leave that site and go find other sites. You know, that's you're too young to settle down with one news site, folks. Um, we should be checking information. So it's uh, not only looking to see if other websites are publishing the same thing, but it's also to check, OK, what I found this site. What is this site? What do other websites say about, you know, Fox News or NPR or um, what is it, TMZ? I have no idea what the kids watch and listen to these days. Uh, and so I can start noticing patterns or discrepancies. So if three websites say A and one website says B, I should be critical. Like, why is website four saying B? Um, are there other sites that are, are website one, two, and three credible? And four is kind of the outlier? Or is it the other way around? Am I looking at some, like, rando crazy websites and I finally hit a main news source that makes me stay, that makes me rethink B. Uh, so it's important to lateral read. It just helps validate the information that we're taking in. All right. Good luck, folks.